Okay, perfect. A couple minutes past the hour here, so we're going to get started. Thank you, everyone, for coming out uh, to this event. I really appreciate it. I make it sound like it's a, you know, we're in a physical location, but we're virtual here. So um, thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us uh, and increasing your revenue with standalone. We're going to go over some great stuff today and just re uh, refresh on some, uh, some of our different solutions at BBD and some ways to kind of get creative and think outside of the box when it comes to spending accounts, because I love spending accounts and there's a a variety of different great ways to use them. So um, if you're just signing on, uh, the Q&A chat box is going to be used for questions. So any questions you have throughout the session, plug them in there and I will do my best to address them at the end of the session. If we can't get through them all, we'll have, um, we'll be sharing the question listing with our, with our Director of Partner Solutions, TPA+. Plus. Um, so if for whatever reason, you know, we couldn't get to your question or something wasn't answered or you have additional questions, um, your reps are standing by uh, ready to help out. So thank you again for joining us today. Uh, we're going to kick right into it here. My name is Jordan Bullhose. I've been with Benefits by Design for quite a few years now uh, on the business development side of things. And I'm very excited to be here talking to you all today. So let's get started. So to preface, to kind of just kick things off here with spending accounts, um, you know, they're here to stay. Healthcare spending accounts aren't going anywhere. And I'm sure a lot of the advisors on the call today can attest to the fact that, um, you know, it's a very popular option in the small business market and, and it, it's a great option in, in a variety of different ways. So um, with, with the recent stats coming in on the Benefits Canada Health Survey, one of my favorite industry uh, events, I thought I'd share a few statistics around HSAs to kind of kick things off today. So uh, one of them being 94% of plan members agree that their health spending account is an important part of their benefits plan. 87% of plan members without an HSA would like to have a spending account. And 93% of plan sponsors agree that their HSA is actually an important part of their benefits plan. So you can see that the perceptions of spending accounts overall is very positive. Um, there is a bit of a disclaimer, though, that I did note in the uh, in the report, uh, and I actually pulled this statement right from the port report, saying that HSAs and WSAs cannot be considered a substitute for traditional and flex plan designs, given that they don't have or provide insurance coverage. Um, and that was just something that the, the members of the board reminded, um, just to have top of mind. And this is what we're going to talk a little bit more about today. So. Just a quick overview uh, of our standalone spending account. Um, we are partnered with my HSA on the on the back on the back end to deliver that seamless um, tech platform and user experience. And we can do you know the healthcare spending accounts. We can do the wellness spending accounts. We can do um, you know the combo of, of the both of them. So completely wide open as to how your client wants to have it structured. With our standalone spending accounts, there is absolutely no deposit requirement, which is another uh, big plus for the standalone program. It is simply a pay-as-you-claim system, so nice and easy for the plan sponsor and uh, plan members to figure out. There's no minimum amount of time and business requirement, and this is a big one too, especially for you know folks that are just starting up a business or they've recently incorporated. Um, this is a really great way to kind of get a, a benefits package in place and an offering in place to really kind of, you know, kick off becoming a, com a competitive employer in the marketplace. So uh, another thing to consider there. We can offer these standalone spending accounts down to one employee. So we can do owner operator. Um, so that's another, you know, there's no minimum employee amount. So another uh, positive to be mindful of there. Uh, per CRA rules, you do have to be incorporated to have a, a spending account set up. Um, so that is a requirement when we're implementing a spending account that a business is incorporated for eligibility. Um, of course, you know, everybody knows this. It can be used to cover any health or dental items listed on the CRA uh, medical expense listing. Um, so, you know, completely wide open as to how the employee wants to use it. Uh, our fees for the standalone spending account is a 5.5% admin fee, and then on top of that, uh, a 4% advisor commission, so coming in at 9.5% all around. And we do have a standalone travel option available. So if you have a client that you know is implementing a healthcare spending account or they want to add 
or they are asking about a travel benefit, well, we do have that solution available as well, as well through our partners at AwayCare. So we partnered with AwayCare really just to fill that need. We were finding um, quite a demand and in, in, in customers looking at, you know, can we get travel with our spending account? Can we add some component of uh, insurance to our spending account? And the answer is yes. So uh, we have this great partnership with AwayCare, very competitive travel solution. Just like our spending account, it can be offered down to one uh, employee participating. Uh, one of the big leaders for this pot potential or this actual solution is the 30 day stability clause. A lot of stability clauses out there in the market are a little bit longer, but this one is a very competitive 30 day. So, um, a really neat feature about this particular product. The benefits terminate at age 70 with away care. Um, Standard, standard benefit amount, 5 million Canadian per insured. We have 15 and 30 day travel options available under our partnership with AwayCare. And um, just the rates here I've posted, so you can get a quick glimpse at those, but um, the rates are uh, available in all of our AwayCare marketing materials as well. So uh, just a reminder, this can be added on to your spending account if you have a client looking to incorporate travel into their uh, HSA or, or wellness. So going to revisit the uh, Green Shield Health Assist product here as well, which maybe many of you on the call might be familiar with already, but it's important to review this and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come in handy later on in the presentation uh, when we kind of look at some different case examples. So just an overview on Health Assist. Uh, there's Green Shield Health Assist Link and there's Zone. Link is their conversion product. So if you have um, a plan member that's going to be losing their coverage, or they were terminated, or you know they've left their employer, what have you. Link gives uh, those employees up to 90 days to convert their um, to convert their coverage to a guaranteed issue plan. So there's four plans under Link that they have to choose from. Um, no medical questions asked, guaranteed issue. Um, so it's a very competitive plan. Benefits are for life. Uh, so it's a really, really great, strong conversion product. And then uh, they also have Green Shield Health Assist Zone. And Zone is available for folks that, um, you know, maybe they don't have benefits coverage or they're self-employed uh, or they're a contract worker, kind of gig worker um, type model. Um, or, you know, maybe they have a group plan and they just want to have something to top it up. So, um, you know, Zone kind of helps fill that need as well. So under Zone, there's eight plans available. There's four that are guaranteed issues. So zone one, two, three, and fundamental. And then there's four medically underwritten plans through zone. So zone four, five, six, and seven. Um, the instant, uh, the guaranteed issue plans. So any of the link plans or any of the uh, four guaranteed issue plans available through Health Assist Zone um, are instantly approved if you use your advisor URL. And again, we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like in the next couple of minutes here. Um, but instant approval on those guaranteed issue plans, which is huge. And it's a seven to 10 business day turnaround typically for plans that require medical underwriting. And the medical underwriting process is actually uh, quite straightforward with Green Shield. It's really just a series of you know, medical um, questions, yes or no questions that you answer on the application. There's no need for uh, an APS statement or uh, an in-person you know, practitioner visit. Everything is very uh, straightforward. So another really great feature to the Health Assist uh, products. The awesome thing about Health Assist is that coverage is for life. So this goes for both the link programs and the zone programs. Once they're on that plan and they are paying their premiums month to month, they have coverage for as long as they need coverage for. And that goes for the travel benefit as well. So a lot of um, providers out there in the individual health and dental space, uh, travel will typically terminate at a younger age, you know, around 70, 75. Um, but Green Shield, there is absolutely no termination age on the travel as well as the other benefits. So a huge uh, advantage there to that particular solution. Uh, so folks have up to their 80th birthday to apply for coverage. And I saw that was actually just a question that came up in the uh, Q&A here. So good timing. You read my mind or maybe read ahead in the presentation. <laughs> But uh, yeah, they have up to their 80th birthday to apply. So they, they can start to apply at age 18 and then they have up to their 80th birthday to apply for coverage. So uh, a nice big window there to, um, 
to explore these solutions. Uh, of course, single couple and family coverage is available under these plans. Again, the, the other really big advantage here to the family coverage in particular with Health Assist is that it is a flat uh, family rate for coverage. So um, you pay one price regardless of the number of dependents you have on the plan. A lot of uh, other pr um, providers out there, what will typically happen is, you know, they'll charge an extra price per dependent that you add to the plan, which can often sometimes increase the premium that the client is having to uh, pay a month. Um, so that's another really nice competitive feature about the health assist solution is, is the one flat rate for family. Uh, the top age rate band, again, another huge uh, competitive advantage for health assist is uh, age 65 plus. So if you are, let's say you're 74 years old and you're applying for one of these health assist programs, you would apply using the 65 plus age rate band. And that is the rate band that you stay in for the duration of the time you're on the plan. Regardless, I mean, you know, it's subject to the annual, um, you know, increases or decreases that the pool of the product sees. But once that client is in that 65 plus age band, they're not moving up any more age bands. That is really uh, where it caps out. Uh, and again, another huge competitive advantage there for Health Assist. A lot of, you know, uh, other products, the age bands will keep going up. And with that, uh, premiums become a little more costly. So another really great win for the Health Assist solution. Uh, and now we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about the uh, co-branded advisor URL that uh, is available and we have the ability to set up for our advisor partners. Um, so basically what that looks like is this is essentially what the landing page looks like. So if you have an advisor URL, you simply provide this URL to your client. They're able to compare the different plans. They can run uh, quotes. And they can even apply online uh, from the comfort of their home. So really cool that GreenShield has uh, made this functionality available to our advisor partners. Of course, um, it is completely customizable. So in the top left there where I've circled uh, the BBD logo, uh, that's just an example, but we have the ability to include your advisor firm logo if you wanted to have it on that URL. So you can kind of customize it a little bit more to your clientele. Uh, and then in the top right there under contact us, if you click that link, um, we can have it updated so that it can show, you know, your advisor contact information, the best number to reach you at, your personal advisor email for clients to, you know, email you any questions, that kind of thing. So um, GreenShield can really build this out in a way that's, uh, you know, fully personalized for your business and your firm. So when a client logs on, you know, they can either compare the plans, but we typically recommend getting a quote because they're still able to compare the, the plans in that regard anyway. So if they click to get a quote, this is the page that they are taken to. Um, they have the ability up at the top here to indicate, you know, what kind of coverage are you looking for? Are you looking for, you know, a, a mix of health, dental and drug? Are you looking for just drug and dental only? Um, if, you've in, if you've indicated that you're losing benefits, then you'll have the health assist link options also come up as plans to compare. So really intuitive little system they've built here. And uh, you, have a, you have the ability to select up to three different health assist plans to compare. So when you're comparing, this is really what that looks like. So you've selected your three plans. Um, it shows what the premium is going to be for the month based on what you've selected. Uh, there is a, uh, a drop down on the on the left side here, so you can see how much is covered for prescription drugs under each uh, certain plan. You can see how much is covered for dental. If uh, you can see the little eye icon here next to prescription drugs, maybe small on your screen, but um, you know if you're sitting with a client and you know they ask what kind of prescription drugs are covered under this plan. If you hover over that icon there, it actually tells you, um, you know, what what kind of formulary Green Shield's using on these health assist programs, and same thing with the dental and other health services below, which you can't see here. But you know, if they're like, you know, what what constitutes basic dental services, what constitutes comprehensive or major or ortho it lists all those services that would fall under those categories. So everything right there at your fingertips when you're promoting these solutions. So once you've uh, decided to pick the plan you want to apply for, 
Uh, you simply begin the application process online. Um, so basically just a declaration here, just a couple of tick boxes to confirm that you know, you've know you met your eligibility requirements. The eligibility requirements are pretty straightforward. You have to be um, either a Canadian citizen with, or a permanent residence, um, or, and you have to have uh, provincial health uh, care in place as well. Uh, and then, of course, you have to be within those eligible application ages between 18 and 79. Um, so those are just, you know, some of the eligibility criteria. But by signing off on those boxes there, um, you're able to kind of give that authorization that, you know, you've met the criteria and you're good to go. So before, before things get interesting here on my title slide, just a couple of questions in the chat here, uh, just health assist related. So I figured I'd answer those before we move on. Um, just one of them here is the link plan. Is that conversion option coming out, out of any group plan? So yes, so they don't have to be coming off of a BBD group plan to be eligible for link. They can be leaving a plan from any provider and they're eligible to apply for uh, any of the Green Shield link programs. Uh, and this, it looks like the same question was asked twice. So yeah, it can be, they can be coming off of any, uh, any group insurer. They can apply for the link program. Awesome. So where things get interesting, and I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seat now, like, what is Jordan going to say? How is this going to get interesting? Can it get any more interesting? Um, so the one thing to keep in mind, and uh, HCSAs can also cover premiums paid towards these um, individual health and dental plans. So that's kind of why I've started the presentation, just kind of talking a little bit about spending accounts, talking a little bit about health assist. There was definitely a reason for that. And this is one of the big reasons here. So um, this is pulled right from the CRA uh, medical expense listing on their website. But basically any premiums paid towards a private health service plan is an eligible expense for your healthcare spending account. So we're going to give an example as to what this looks like in, in a real life kind of scenario, um, but just something to be mindful of if, if this wasn't uh, privy to you previously. So Basically, with this, you're, you're able to go a little bit further with the HSA. So why does, why does Health Assist Zone with an HSA make sense? So, of course, with a, an individual plan, you have access to uh, your ID card. So when you sign up for Health Assist, you get access to a green, a green Shield ID card that you can use for direct billing at the pharmacy, at the dentist, you know, any um, of the providers that you see for your services. The other big thing here too is that it actually extends coverage beyond allocations. So one of the big things we hear often, um, you know, and I'm sure advisors on the call hear it as well, is when you have a $2,000 allotment, let's say for the year for every employee, and you have an employee that one of them is taking single and the other one's taking family, you know, that single $2,000 allotment might go a lot further for that single plan member than it would the family plan member with, you know, the, themselves, their spouse, all their dependents. So kind of pairing the two together is a really great way to, again, ex extend the coverage that's offered beyond the allocated amount. And we'll get into a little bit of, of what that looks like and how that works in practicality, but um, really something to be mindful of there. Uh, not only does it do that, but of course, through uh, Green Shield, you also get access to a variety of telehealth services that you wouldn't just have access to just going HSA direct. So you have coverage for things like um, mental health, ink blot therapy, uh, preferred pricing on virtual doctor services, the list goes on. So a lot of really great features that you have access to as a result. Uh, the HSA can also be used to cover any excess dollars that maybe the individual health or dental plan doesn't cover. So, um, you know, typically, and you know, we see this on group plans as well, there's a copay, right? There's a copay for drugs. There's, you know, reimburses at 80 or 90% or, you know, massage or, or practitioners or any of those services. They're typically reimbursed at, let's say, a $50 maximum per visit. So you can use your HSA to cover any kind of balance that, you know, the individual plan doesn't pick up. So they can kind of work in tandem that way. And then, of course, like I was mentioning, the HSA can be used to cover, uh, individual health plan premiums. So another really great, uh, great way to leverage the spending account. 
And then as the advisor, not only would you be receiving the commission on the individual health and dental plan, but you're also receiving commission for any kind of premium submitted to the HSA because of that uh, admit premium. And I just saw a question pop up here in the chat. What about group health premiums? So yeah, group health premiums also eligible as a um, as a uh, an, an eligible expense through healthcare spending account. CRA um, states that any any premiums paid towards a private health service plan. So a private health service plan could be either a group plan. It could be an HSA or it can be an individual um, health and dental plan like Health Assist. So whatever qualifies as a, as a private health service plan, any premium towards that is an eligible expense through the healthcare spending account. So we'll take a look at an example here and um, hopefully that'll help kind of, you know, bring a little bit of light to the situation and help you kind of see the bigger picture and how this, how this might play out in a, in a client scenario. So. We use an example here. Uh, the client is a four employee group located in Ontario. The business is incorporated. So they're, you know, right off the bat there with the incorporation piece, they could consider an HSA and they're just over a couple of years in business. So they're in a pretty heavy uh, startup phase hitting the ground running here. All employees are in great health. They haven't had any major issues and no current, you know, health issues. Everyone's great. Uh, it's the workforce consists of a younger employee demographic in their mid twenties to you know early thirties, and uh, all singles on the plan. There's no partners or any dependents or anything like that. So, um, pretty straightforward case here. The owner has indicated that they want cost certainty, um, and so you know they they're familiar a little bit with how the traditional model works. Their advisor went over that with them, and you know how. Pricing may fluctuate based on plan usage and claims experience. So he's mentioned that, you know, they can't handle any kind of fluctuation, any fluctuations in pricing. They want to make sure that they have stable pricing year over year. So uh, they said, you know, all we have right now is $10,000 a year to spend on benefits for the next five years. That's all we can afford right now. Cash flow is tight. We need all the resources we can get in this startup phase of our business. Uh, benefits need to be flexible but robust. So um, obviously, you know, the employer wants to give the employees some autonomy over how they use their benefits and, and let them use it how they see fit. Um, but then they also want to make sure employees want to know that they have the robust coverage when they need it. You know, God forbid anything happens to them or anything um, serious comes up. So let's look at what this what this might look like. So right away, I'm sure uh, many of you in the in the audience today are thinking you know uh wow they're incorporated uh you know they want some cost predictability they only have ten thousand dollars to allocate a year you know spending account of course that's the first solution so if we look at a spending account we could look at the situation as you know let's give each employee two thousand dollars for the year they can use it however they see fit um, so just doing a quick calculation, you know, based on our admin fees that we charge and the applicable taxes, you know, we're coming out to 9674. So just under budget, which is perfect. I think any business owner would be happy to see that. Uh, but of course, this is assuming 100% HSA usage, which is very unlikely most of the time. Um, but we've made that assumption here for example purposes. So that's part one of the solution as to what as to what this could look like for the client. The second part, and I'm sure you're thinking this too, is the employees looking for robust health coverage. Well, employees wanna make sure that they have the coverage in place for when they need it. God forbid anything happen. So that's when we can really start to look at the health assist zone programs uh, for these particular employees. And because they're all in really good health and they've indicated that, you know, haven't had any past or current medical issues, it's in their best interest to look at a medically underwritten zone plan. They're going to get a lot more coverage for, for the premium that they would have to pay. So, um, you know, they offer a variety, uh, a variety of different uh, maximums. When you get up to the zone six and seven, you know, plans are very, very generous with the maximums that they're giving on an annual basis. Um, there's a travel benefit in there. Green Shield's done a great job of adding in some mental health services. Um, and then that ink blot therapy, that new partnership there is now available to health assist plan members as well. So, um, 
you know, when they do need the coverage, they, they have a really great plan that they can rely on um, to kind of help. So, and think of like, you know, the situation where, yeah, an employee might have a $2,000 annual allocation for their spending account, but you know, what happens in the situation where there's, you know, a high cost drug that comes up or, you know, they need to have multiple visits to the dentist or what have you, and they're getting low on their spending dollars. Well, again, this is a really great way to, you know, pair the two together and give that insurance protection to those, to those employees should they need it. So this really provides access to benefits that just an HSA alone wouldn't be able to provide. And we kind of alluded to that a little bit earlier, having access to, you know, telehealth uh, programs, the digital, the digital mental health services, things like inkblot therapy, um, and of course, the travel benefit being the big one on some of those upper plans, zone six and seven, you get a 30 day uh, travel plan, which is pretty comparable to a lot of group plans out there. And of course, like I've been mentioning throughout this presentation, um, you know, if an employee does opt to purchase a health assist plan, they are able to run that premium cost through their HSA. So again, they're taking their dollars uh, a lot further than they would if they were just sticking with the HSA on its own. So um, really good way to kind of, you know, offer something that feels like a traditional plan to a group, um, but provides that cost certainty to the business owner. So tying it all together, um, and again, this is a very simple scenario uh, for example purposes, but you know, employees, all the employees in this group, they opt to apply for the Health Assist Zone 6 product and they use their advisor's URL. So again, a good opportunity if, you know, if you're doing a, a, an employee rollout session for a healthcare spending account, could be a good opportunity for you to get your advisor URL in front of the group as well and share that with them and say, hey, guess what? Did you know if you apply for one of these plans, you can run your premium to your spending account, take your coverage further. Um, you know, there's a whole, a whole kind of story you can get into there. But um, for this particular example, every employee has applied, as mentioned, you know, uh, they're in their late, mid 20s to early 30s. So they're going to fall into that 18 to 44 age band in Ontario for the single applicant. Uh, and with that, the premium comes out to $149 a month. So pretty affordable for the most part. The plan highlights for Zone Six just a few of the high, a uh, few of the really awesome options about Zone Six here. But some of the notables is a ten thousand dollar drug max at ninety percent, uh, eight hundred dollars of dental in year one, which increases to thirteen hundred of, of coverage in year three at eighty percent, and then as well in year three, uh, major and ortho dental services become available as well. For the mental health services, they have uh, up to six hundred per person per year. For any psychologist, psychotherapist, or regist registered social worker uh, services. Uh, and as well, they have access to that Inkblot virtual counseling program. And then they have that 30 day travel benefit in there as well as part of the Health Assist Zone 6 um, plan. So, what does the process look like? So, the employee simply can submit their premium receipt to their healthcare spending account for reimbursement. So, the total cost for this type of plan for the year would be. Um, just under $1,800. So they could submit that to their healthcare spending account. They have the $2,000 allotment. So they would still have some money left over to use to cover any, you know, potential out of pocket co-pays that they might realize if they were, you know, claiming a prescription or they're at the dentist. They have some funds left over there to kind of help fund uh, and, you know, completely be, um, not completely be out of pocket, so to speak. So a really great solution here and, and a really good way to kind of, like I said, offer what feels like a traditional plan, but in a way that provides some cost certainty to the uh, plan sponsor. So the results, so like, like we've talked about a little bit earlier, we've essentially extended the coverage beyond the allotted amount of dollars. So yeah, the employee was given $2,000 allotment for the year, but by purchasing the zone six program, they now have access to a $10,000 drug max if they need it. They now have access to, you know, $800 of dental coverage for the year if they need it. They have a 30-day travel benefit. They have all these things that they wouldn't have had if they had just stuck with the HSA only. So 
um, a really good use case for that. Of course, with Health Assist, they have that coverage for life as well as the travel benefits. So, um, you know, let's say they sign up for a Health Assist plan and they decide to maybe leave their employer. You know, hopefully they don't, but, you know, they leave the employer or, you know, there's a bit of a, a change in employment. Um, they can take that plan with them. It's not tied to the employer. So they can take that zone coverage with them wherever they go. Um, with the Green Shield ID card and HSA, you know, they're, they're not going to be out of pocket or they might be, but very little. Um, you know, if, if there's a little bit left in the HSA balance to cover co-pays, that kind of thing. But again, really, really reducing the amount that the plan member would have to pay out of pocket for health and dental services. No, no surprise here, you know, we've offered cost predictability for this employer. They mentioned that they only have a $10,000 budget a year that they want to spend on benefits. So we've met that, uh, we've met that requirement. We've been able to provide them something that's going to work. And we've created something that's flexible for the plan member. They can use it how they see fit. As the advisor on this case, so assuming that, you know, um, that the all employees are, are putting their health assist premiums through their spending account and that, you know, everybody's opted for the zone six program here. Just for this example, um, you'd be looking at a total comp of, four, of just under or just over $1,400. So essentially doubling what you what you would make if you just stuck with the HSA. So um, a really good incentive to really talk more about health assist and, and promote that solution as part of the um, overall benefits strategy. So what to take from this? Uh, definitely keep an open shelf of solutions. HSAs are a really, really uh, awesome benefit. One of my favorites. I like them because you can use it in a variety of ways. There's no one way to use it. So um, it appeals to everyone and it, they just work really well. It's a really good way to offer traditional benefits, what feels like a traditional benefits plan in a cost-effective way. They have that ID card, you know, they have um, the benefits booklet that they would get with their, with their health assist plan. So it really feels like a traditional benefit program without, you know, um, giving that, without giving that rate fluctuation that you could typically see on a traditional benefit plan from year to year. So um, a really great option there. Of course, you know, like I've been saying all along, the allotments really can only offer so much, especially in family scenarios. People want to, you know, sometimes they get a little bit skeptical. How am I going to use this $2,000 for my whole family? Well, instead of, you know, having the $2,000 for the whole family, you've now given not just the plan member, but the spouse and any dependents, they each have a per cert maximum under the health assist plan, right? So they each have access to that $10,000 drug max. They each have that, you know, uh, $800 dental max. They're not limited to the allotment. They're now under the health assist uh, insured plan. So again, a really awesome way to extend coverage beyond the allocation for the year. Of course, this can be done down to one employee as well, like I mentioned earlier and under one year in business. So uh, gig worker economy, you know, big, big uh, opportunities in that potential or certain market right now. Um, a lot of, you know, uh, people just self-employed, owner-operator scenarios. This is a really, really fantastic solution for them as well, you know, to cover themselves and any potential uh, family members and dependents. And the ease of promoting Green Shield Health Assist. So Green Shield makes it extremely simple to uh, promote the programs with that advisor URL, like I was saying earlier. Any, um, any guaranteed acceptance plans you put through that URL are automatically approved. The medically underwritten plans are turned around in a seven to 10 business day timeframe, give or take. Um, and the nice thing about that is the sale and the comp is automatically tracked back to you because that advisor URL is set up specifically with your uh, BBD advisor code. So very seamless extremely straightforward to sell these programs with clients. Uh, there's not really a renewal process involved with Health Assist either. They get an annual letter that, you know, basically states uh, if there is a change in premium, what that premium is going to look like. So 
um, really the plans just manage themselves and take care of themselves. So uh, nice and simple for the advisor to promote. So for new prospects, if you know if this sounds like a solution that might work for you know a, a case you're working on now or a potential opportunity, your director of partner solutions TPA Plus are standing by to help in any way they can. Uh, and of course, if you wanted to get a quote on a solution like this, our new business team is is happy to help. All quotes can be sent to uh, the address listed there, quotes at bbd.ca. And then any Enforce clients, um, you know, if you have a standalone uh, HSA client already and you want to talk about, you know, adding on Health Assist or, or you want to have access to your URL to promote it with, with that group, by all means, get in touch with your client manager and they will be able to assist with that as well. So now is my favorite part of the presentation is the questions. So um, we've got a few questions here in the chat box. Of course, um, if anybody has any questions while we're going through this, feel free to submit. Um, but we'll try and get through everything here as best as we can. So um, the first question, let me just take a peek here. So the first question is, is there an advisor website to get uh, the link brochure and rates? So yeah, Green Shield has done um, what's called the Health Assist uh, Advisor Toolkit website. So on that landing page, they always have the most up-to-date um, brochures, marketing materials, rates. Um, they also have a variety of other really awesome items on there as well. Uh, as well as like marketing materials. They have pieces that you can download and, and uh, white label to your uh, firm. So you can use it those pieces to promote Health Assist amongst your clientele. So a lot of great uh, resources on that Advisor Toolkit site. And uh, the advisor here, I'll, I'll jot down your name and I'll share that link with you uh, following the webinar here, um, just so you have reference to that. Perfect. So the second question here, um, has Greenshield ever considered implementing a zone eight that has an unlimited drug maximum? Wishful thinking. I love, I love the question. Uh, I haven't heard anything of that yet, but I can certainly check in with our, our friends over at Greenshield to see if there's been any talks of that or any ideas throw around and we'll certainly follow up. Uh, medically underwritten zone plans, are there exclusions for existing prescriptions the plan member is on? So great question. And the answer is yes. So um, basically, like I was saying, with the medical underwriting process with uh, Health Assist, um, you go through basically a listing of yes or no questions. And basically, you know, it's like, have you ever had asthma? Have you ever had this condition, that condition? Uh, you just answer yes or no. And then you, you know, you provide any additional medications you're on, doctor information, things like that. Um, so Green Shield takes all that into consideration. If you do have an existing conditions or uh, previous conditions or you're on a current prescription, Green Shield will exclude coverage for that prescription used to treat that illness, but they'll still issue coverage. They'll still issue coverage for everything else. You'll still have uh, drug coverage for any other prescriptions you may need down the road. They're just not going to um, provide coverage for uh, any drugs that are known at time of application or not provide coverage for any prescriptions for conditions that are known at time of application. So uh, great question and definitely something to be mindful of. If, if they have um, issued an, ex an exclusion in the medical underwriting process on the prescription, what uh, Health Assist will do is they'll actually issue a counter offer letter. So um, basically, after the underwriting process, a letter will go out to uh, yourself, the advisor, the client, uh, and it'll say, you know, thanks for applying. Um, we have, you know, a few options for you here. You can take, let's say, zone six with the exclusion on asthma. So you can't, you know, if you've indicated you have asthma in the application, can't use uh, or claim any prescriptions towards asthma, but you still have full coverage for everything else under that plan. Um, so that's option one is taking the zone six with that exclusion. Option two would be the zone fundamental program, which is the 
a guaranteed issue option under zone that offers a little bit of prescription drug coverage, dental, and other health surface, surface services. Uh, try saying that 10, 10 times fast. Um, that would be the other option that would be offered. It's guaranteed issue and it offers a little bit of everything. So that would be the second option. And then the third option, if you've indicated on your application that you've recently lost group coverage or that you're gonna be losing group coverage, um, a third option would be available on that counter offer letter to apply for any of the link uh, programs. So link one, two, three, or four. So regardless of you know whether or not um, a client or an applicant has had you know medical issues in the past or current, Green Shield's always going to try and try and put something forward and try and put an offer forward to make sure that the applicant can get access to coverage. So um, really, really cool that they do that and uh, not, not something you see a lot of in the marketplace either. So I'm glad you asked that questions and thank you. Going on to the next question here. Um, can you get a one person health assist plan? So yeah, so uh, health assist is an individual health and dental plan. So typically um, they, all, they are purchased just by one person. Um, you can, I have seen scenarios as well where, you know, maybe it's a business owner and they have one staff member that they want to buy benefits for. Um, we can actually set up the health assist plan to cover that staff member, but the plan can be paid for by the business as well. So um, something to keep in mind there as well. Uh, we have another question here. When would you submit to your healthcare spending account on a monthly basis or annually? Um, I'm going to guess that's maybe related to the health assist premium submission. Uh, if it's not, certainly correct me if I'm wrong, but they can submit their monthly premium on a monthly basis, or they can do it at the end of the year. They can grab all their receipts, so they can do it whatever way works best for them but they're actually able to log on to the um, Green Shield plan member site. They can pull their premium receipts and then that would be enough to submit to the healthcare spending account for reimbursement. So yeah, they can, they can submit it on a monthly base, basis and have their um, monthly premium reimbursed or they can do it annually, whatever works best for them. Uh, so the compensation for the standalone uh, healthcare spending account, can you explain what that looks like? So um, it's a 4% advisor comp on the uh, standalone spending accounts, whether you're doing the HSA, WSA, or both. Uh, it is a 4% commission that we pay to the advisor. Um, and there, I believe, and someone might correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe there has to be at least uh, $50 of of commission generated before we actually do a payout. So once there's at least $50 generated there, that's when we do the payout to the advisor. Uh, so any tips, uh, a question here, any tips on prospecting business owner clients, any marketing materials or template emails you can share? Um, so I'm glad you asked uh, on that Health Assist Advisor Toolkit site, which I can share uh, as well. There is a whole slew of really awesome marketing pieces that Green Shield has put together that advisors can just take and, and run with it. They plug in their contact details, um, or if they want to make a you know a few little edits to it, everything's there ready made for you to use. So uh, really awesome that they've done that, um, and just you know makes the job of promoting the the program that much simpler. So. Um, We'll definitely share that resource with you all uh, following this session. I think, uh, and then to answer the first part of that question, any tips on prospecting business owner clients, especially when it comes to the healthcare spending account? And I think this is kind of a narrative that uh, I've heard over and over again with, with you know, um, driving the need for spending accounts is, you know, do you want to do you want to pay for your medical and dental expenses with after tax dollars or before tax dollars, right? So that's that right there alone is, I think, probably enough for the business owner to say, well, I want to do it in the most tax efficient way possible. And so a spending account really gives the business owner uh, that ability to run their health and dental expenses through the business in a tax effective way, and they actually get that money back tax free um, when they claim through the spending account. So. Um, certainly from a tax uh, advantage perspective, that is one big reason I hear all the time as to why businesses love uh, 
implementing spending accounts. So another question here, can standalone be implemented for the owner only by using an executive class distinction? Um, so we've seen we've seen that before, just as long as benefits are being made available to other employees, we can do, um, we've seen like a management class or a leadership class and they have certain allotments. So we can definitely narrow it down by allotment by class. Um, so we do have that ability for sure. There's another question here. Sorry, I, I missed it. Can you have the unused uh, health spending account, wellness spending account put into a group RSP? Um, that one I'm not 100% sure on, so I can, I can follow up on that one. Um, but I appreciate the question and we'll get you the answer uh, for that. Just looking through the other questions here. Great, so uh, when a member is submitting their group premiums to a healthcare spending account, what would they submit? A pay stub showing their pay deductions for the benefits. So yeah, they would, um, they've, they would definitely submit their pay stub showing you know, how much was taken off their pay for uh, health, and, health and dental premiums. So definitely by submitting that stub, that is proof that you know, they've paid for their um, group health and dental premium. And that's what, uh, that's what our adjudicators would use to reimburse for the health and dental premium. Some of these questions are pretty long, so I'm just reading through them here. <laughs> My apologies. Great question. So one of them here is um, for health assist plans paid for by a business owner for its employees, is Greenshield looking at any way an employee can divert the payment to the employer? Otherwise, the employer would have to be present and provide uh, payment details when the employee reaches the payment section of the application. So to my knowledge right now, I don't think there's a way on the advisor URL that they're able to divert to the employer to fill that out. Um, but certainly if they're doing a paper application, which Greenshield still accepts uh, paper applications for health assist, what we often see is the applicant will do the first three pages, which is, um, you know, their basic information, the medical information, you know, all those details. The last page is where the... Um, payment details would go. So you could definitely keep that page separate, maybe from the employee to have the employer fill out. Once both parties have filled out their respective parts of the application, you definitely put them together, PDF it, send it over to us, and we can work with that to uh, send over to GreenShield. Yeah, so the uh, recap rules around employees versus owners. Example, at least one arm's length employee needs to be offered the same amount. Um, so to my knowledge, um, a, an HSA can't be set up for an owner only. They have to, if they have other employees there, they have to make sure that benefits are being offered, not just for them, but for the other employees as well. Um, as far as the amounts go, uh, I'm going to get back to you on that and do some digging because um, not 100% sure on, you know, if they can have a different amount than other employees. So we'll do a little bit of digging on that and follow up. Um, I've jotted your name down here so we know who to follow up with, um, but we'll get you that information. It looks like that's all the uh, questions here. So with that, um, certainly if you have any other questions, uh, after the session, feel free to either follow up with myself or your director of partner solutions, TPA plus, and we would be happy to help you answer any questions you have. 
Uh, with that, thank you for coming out to the presentation today, virtually, not physically. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here. Hopefully you took a lot of great stuff away. And uh, hopefully that gets the creative juices flowing as far as, you know, what can we be doing different with spending accounts? So thank you so much and uh, look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a great day.